With student debt interest resuming this month and payments resuming next month, it's another reason everybody hates Reagan. With an average of nearly $40,000 in student loan debt burdening almost 44 million Americans, our crippling $1.8 trillion in student loan debt is, of course, Ronald Reagan's fault. Now you'll often hear the Ronald Reagan worshipers who are trying to make America great again by doing everything possible to ruin it, bitch about how it's not their responsibility and tax dollars shouldn't pay for college tuition because they're too fucking stupid to understand that high college tuition actually costs us more in tax money. But that, along with how cutting other social programs actually costs us more money, is a topic all on its own. They also seem to struggle a little bit with dementia and forget that college, when America was great, was also tuition free. For well over a century, from the mid-1960s to the early 1980s, tuition-free college was the norm. In fact, many of our founding fathers were strong proponents of free and comprehensive education. So much so that Thomas Jefferson argued for a broad, free, comprehensive public education system and founded the University of Virginia. And he did that because he believed that only well-educated citizens could make self-governance a success. You know, democracy. And the fact that education is key to making democracy and freedom successful is exactly the reason that Ronald Reagan and conservatives hate it so much. It's hard to do a fascism when people understand how government and society and economies work. So when Ronald Reagan, who has always hated democracy and freedom and loved the idea of blowing up foreigners, started running for governor of California in 1966, it was really grinding his gears that college students were using their First Amendment freedoms to protest blowing up foreigners. So in his first term, he shut down all 28 UC and Cal State campuses to try to shut them damn commie kids up. He then cut education funding repeatedly over his eight years as governor, removing, capping, and limiting much of the state aid that allowed colleges to accept middle and lower income students at no cost or low cost. And then when colleges, universities, and students alike all complained that this was going to create funding shortfalls that couldn't be covered, Reagan was like, sorry, I'm just too fucking incompetent as a leader and general human being to balance a fucking budget. So I'm making this a you problem and you should probably just charge tuition. They're like, so what about all the middle and lower income people who just can't afford tuition? fuck him then? And he got genuinely irritated and he's like, no, I made it very clear. All those poor people can just get loans and then just pay it back after college. And as the criticisms of his shitty education policies continued, Reagan's education advisor, in an attempt to defend him, said the quiet part out loud. At a press conference before the 1970 election, he said, and I quote, we are in danger of creating a educated proletariat. Proletariat, if you don't know, just means us lowly working class peasants. And that is is dynamite. And he didn't mean it like dynamite. No, he meant it like us being educated is a bad thing. Saying we have to be selective on who we let go to college. Because if we're not selective on who we let go to college, Nazis. No joke, that was his argument. While actively being fascist, he argued that if we give too many people an education, they will become fascist. Side note, people who support Reagan and Reagan style policies this is the reason we judge you. I mean, th there's a lot of reasons, but trying to sell us this level of dumb is a big one. Now, this wasn't real popular with, you know, people. Uh, Richard Nixon, on the other hand, well, uh, anything that could help him stick it to those college commies who wouldn't give him unquestioned support of sending teenagers to die in Vietnam got him more aroused than Deep Throat. And his administration started repeating similar rhetoric to the Reagan administration. Most notably with his vice president, the headless body of Agnew, mumbling something about unqualified students being swept into colleges on the new wave of socialism. The new wave that had been going on for over a century. And conservatives, driven by the fear that an educated populace wouldn't be dumb enough to fall for their bullshit like tax cuts for the rich are gonna help the poor, or regulations aren't necessary because rich people really care about making sure that your air, water, and workplace conditions are safe, really ran with this messaging over the next few years. Now fast forward to the early 1980s and Reagan is now trying to ruin the rest of the country the way he ruined California. Now, as president, with the blueprint of how bad his policies sucked at governor, he tried subjecting us to those same policies on a federal level. He tried abolishing the Department of Education as a whole, but thankfully didn't have the congressional support for that. However, he did manage to cut education funding by over 25%. By 1982, he forced over a million students who would have been able to go to college for free, figure it out on their own, or not go at all. And as he continued to cut aid, grants, and programs over the next few years of his presidency, educational institutions were forced to rely more and more on tuition to keep the lights on, and students wanting an education were forced to pay more and more tuition to
to get it. Conveniently, Nixon had already set up a program to fill this gap. Sally Mae, a government program that bought privately held student loans from banks to give them more money to lend to more students. And the era of student debt really began. Banks, now eager to lend more money because it was a guaranteed investment as the federal government would just buy the loans from them, started pushing to lend as much money as possible. Schools looking to replenish their coffers that had been drained by Reagan, who had pulled the rug out from under them, were more than happy to oblige the banks in their mission. Tuition started to go up, but at least Sally Mae was still a federal program that put up some guardrails on how loans could be structured. But of course, Republicans who hate education, poor people, and regulations weren't even happy with this system and began diligently working to fuck it up even more. And in 2004, they finally succeeded, privatizing Sally Mae and just throwing all those regulations out the window. However, even with that privatization, they still managed to keep the federal government on the hook for the security of these loans and shirked any responsibility for their shady, bad, corrupt lending practices by making it illegal to file bankruptcy on them. And with that, the modern student loan system was born, creating incredibly confusing, complicated, and very predatory loans directed at teenagers. And it was all done with the intention of restricting educational access to poor and middle-class families and saddling millions of Americans with insurmountable, inescapable, lifelong debt. Debt that makes sure we all just stay good little workers who can't afford to do things like start a business or get involved in politics. Make sure we're too busy and broke to be socially active because that might hold them accountable. And make sure that we're financially unstable and dependent on our corporate overlords so we don't get any big ideas about becoming financially independent and stable because that could hurt their bottom line. So remember when that student loan payment comes due next month, you only have to pay it because for decades, Republicans and boomers fought tooth and nail to rob you of the educational opportunities that they were handed on a silver fucking platter. And they did it specifically because they felt that your opportunity at achieving the American dream might rob them at their opportunity of achieving obscene wealth and corruption. And every penny of our crushing national student debt crisis was built on a foundation laid by the 40th president of the United States. And that is just one more reason of many that everybody hates Reagan.